Just like in other markets in the crypto space, we have different analytics that we can look at to try to judge the current performance and hopefully predict the future performance of these different cryptos out there. Another interesting aspect is by being able to look at the analytics of different projects that haven't even launched yet, this can actually aid in your investment decision of whether or not you want to go for that token sale or if you want to invest in the token after it releases. There's a lot of different tools and resources out there to actually look at the analytics for NFTs and for different crypto projects. And typically each blockchain will have some sort of top analytics platform that you can use. But there are some out there such as DeFi Llama that does a very good job at capturing the overall space, at least when it comes to money flow into these different blockchains and projects. Now I want to show you guys a couple of metrics that I personally look at or that you might see on these different analytics sites. First thing is market cap. Market cap is just taking the circulating supply, which is all the tokens that are actually out there in the wild and multiplying by the current price. Fully diluted value, FDV, is the total supply times the current price of the token. TVL is total value locked. This is how much money is flowing into a blockchain or a specific project. It's the money that is actually being locked into the dApps or the decentralized applications in those ecosystems. So think of how much money is being borrowed, how much money is being lended, how much money is in a liquidity pool, et cetera, et cetera. You then have volume which is just how much money is being traded. And typically you can look at the volume over an hour, 24 hours, three days a week, whatever you want to do. You then have stable coin market cap. This is the percentage of the market that is just holding stable coins. This is important to look at because as people get more uncertain in the market, they tend to get into stable coins, which is more so sidelining. So as you see that dominance go up, you basically can see that there's a lot more uncertainty in the market. You also have Bitcoin dominance, which is the percentage of the market cap of all of crypto when compared to Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin dominance goes up, a lot of times the altcoins or anything that's not Bitcoin will bleed. And eventually when Bitcoin dominance gets too high, you'll start to see people sell off Bitcoin and get into altcoins once again, where they're hopefully going to chase a larger gain. You then have some other basic stuff such as revenue and fees, how much money these different blockchains and dApps are actually making. This is very important to see what their cash flow is. And DeFi Llama actually shows you how much the operating costs are for these different dApps, at least when it comes to the different gas fees and things that they have to pay. You then have token cliffs, which are part of tokenomics. These are tokens that are locked until a certain date. And this is called token unlocks. There's actually a platform called token unlocks where you can see when these different tokens are unlocking and going to enter the market. And then you have token vesting, which is how many tokens are being distributed over a certain period period of time. So for example, you might have 100,000 tokens. They say we're going to distribute this over a 10 month period and we're going to do this linearly. So 10 months, 100,000 tokens, it's 10,000 tokens per month. Some other metrics continued here is the holder distribution. This is how many unique holders there are for a project. The more unique holders, the better, because this means the supply is distributed with more people rather than it being as concentrated in a handful of people. The median holder balance is another important thing to check. And this is the average or the median amount of US dollar value held per holder. Ideally, you have a lot of holders with the average holder not owning a lot of the token. And this usually leads to the best distributions. Whereas if there aren't as many holders and you have some holders own a bunch of the token, this is where they can have a significant influence on the price of a token. Liquidity is how much money is actually in the liquidity pool. This is for decentralized exchanges. And the more liquidity, the less price impact you're going to have when you're buying and selling. And it's important to have a lot of liquidity. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to exit your positions. Staking percentage you'll sometimes see this on proof of stake chains. It'll show how many people actually locked up that cryptocurrency. And the higher the staking percentage, the more validation or the more conviction these different holders have in that token if they were willing to lock it. I also like to look at total trades. This is how many different unique trades are happening within a specific token. And to combine that with makers, makers show the amount of unique traders during that same period. So you might've had a thousand trades, but it might've only been 200 makers 
or 200 different people making those trades. And I actually think makers are a better thing to look at. You also have listing percentage. This is more so important for NFTs, but how many NFTs or a certain token are listed is important because that's going to show the buy wall or how much buying pressure is needed in order for a token to get to a certain price. And that is what the listing depth is called. So the amount of money needed to move a price by X amount. So for example, if there's 50 NFTs listed at $1,000 and the next listing or the 51th listing is $1,100, you're going to need 50 buys at $1,000, $50,000 to move the price $100 or 10%. And that would be your listing depth. And obviously the stronger your listing depth is or the more thick it is and the more listings there are, the harder it is for the price to actually move up. And you've got to be aware of that. As far as two other things here, you have LP locked. This means that the liquidity in the liquidity pool is locked and can't be removed. This is really important because sometimes they don't lock it and they can remove it at any time. And then now all of a sudden there's no liquidity for you to actually sell your tokens. And then minting authentication determines whether or not that specific token or smart contract can mint more of that token. So it's important that you make sure that that is off. Now I wanted to quickly show you guys DeFi Llama as well as Tap Tools, which is more specific to Cardano as far as an analytics platform. As you see here, guys, you can actually go to chains and you can see the dominance of the TVL or the money locked in each of these different ecosystems. And this is a really great way to see where the money is flowing and also potentially identify a narrative early on. So as you see here, Ethereum has about 60% of the market dominance. There's about 294 chains. And then the second one is Tron. And then you have Binance Smart Chain at around 5.1%. Just be aware that a lot of times analytics can be very manipulated. There could be TVL that's being counted that shouldn't be counted. There can be money that has just been re-looped over and over and over that are adding to numbers. There can be different trading bots or teams buying their own token to fake volume. And it's important to recognize that some of these analytics might not always be true, but it's at least good to get an indicator. And what's really interesting is I can say, hey, what is a one month change when it comes to TVL? And I can identify some of the different blockchains that are growing. A blockchain dies when their TVL is going down because that means that money is flowing out of their ecosystem and into another ecosystem. And I can also do the flip side and do different TVL ranges to see the negative performance of some of these different blockchains as well. What's really cool too is you can click on a specific chain such as Ethereum and then within Ethereum you can see the TVL that's moving within its ecosystem such as Lido which is liquid staking but then maybe some of that money is now being left and it's going to Eigenlayer. So this is a really great way to see whether or not you think a token is going to increase in price as well because if there's a lot of TVL or money flowing into a blockchain or flowing into a token but the token price isn't going up then that might potentially be a disparity where that token could be undervalued. And the same thing goes in reverse where a token price hasn't gone down, but the TVL and volume has gone down a lot. And now you might be thinking to yourself, hey, maybe this is actually an overvalued price for the token based on these different metrics of volume, based on these different metrics of TVL, et cetera, et cetera. On every chain, you're also going to have a top analytics platform. Over on Cardano, there's actually a site called Tap Tools. And this is where you can actually track the liquidity, the market cap, the FDV of the product project, how much the price of the token is moving, how many people are actually making these different transactions, the makers, how many transactions there are in total, the overall volume, the price, as well as their socials. And what's interesting is you can actually look at some of these different pro features and you can look at the volume. Hey, are smaller wallets the ones buying or are they the ones selling? Are bigger wallets buying and selling? How many trades are actually happening? What's the volume over a one week period? Is the amount of total trades going down? Look, it went down 50% this week. That means there's a lot less people paying attention to it. And you can see the different people that are buying, the different people that are selling. You can look at their wallets to see if they're major whales or if they're holding other assets that you might now want to participate in. And a lot of people will actually track wallets of whales, see what they're buying and selling or doing that for influencers. And sometimes they'll just copy trade them. Looking at all this data can be very valuable. And based on different indicators, you can get an idea of where the price is going to go. Okay, TVL is going up. That's a good sign. That's a healthy sign. Maybe that means there's going to be an increase in price. TVL going down. 
That's the opposite. Okay, volume going up and the amount of traders going up and the amount of new holders going up, that means there's growth in this token and that it might increase in price. Okay, volume is going down and the holder count is going down. Okay, maybe this price is going to go down. Same thing with NFTs. Okay, the amount of listing percentage is going up and that depth is increasing. Okay, that means it's gonna take a lot more money for the price to move up and maybe we're going to expect a decrease in price. Same thing is in reverse. The amount of listings are going down and the floor is getting a lot more thin and there aren't as many available. Okay, well, now there isn't as much money needed for this price to really pump. Maybe the price is going to pump. So these are different things that you can look at as far as the analytics. And you can look at the distribution for different projects as well to see what percentage of the supply is in hands of different holders out there. So for example, with SNEC, I can look at the holder distribution and I can make sure that there aren't certain individuals that own way too much of the supply. The less people People that have over 1% of the supply, the better. Once you start getting in that 2 to 4% range, they can really start having a negative impact on the price of the token. Now, you have to be aware that a lot of the first couple wallets might just be treasury wallets or they might be the actual liquidity pool themselves, but there are going to be different wallets that have a ton of the token. And you can track to see how much they're actually buying and selling and if they're whales, if they're shrimp, if they have a bunch of money, if they don't, and what else they're holding. So these are all very important and things to look at. And if you see a token distribution where too few people have too much of the supply, like if the top 10 holders have over 10% of the supply or 15% of the supply, this can actually have a very big impact and it's worth having on your radar. I could go over analytics for hours and say, hey, this is how this affects that. But I'd recommend you watching more videos specifically on that. This is more of a broader overview. And the more time you spend looking at these analytics, the more trends you can see and the more you can identify how these different metrics are going to impact the price. And the better you can do that, the better the trader you're gonna be.